about the basic concept of binomial distribution. So for binomial distribution, I want you to do this right now. So I am trying to give you something, all right? So now hold, take your palms out. So your palm is facing up or facing the ceiling or facing the sky. So I am going to put an object on your palm. Did you get that? Put, take your palms out, face up, face the ceiling or the sky. I am going to give you an object. I'm going to place that on your palm. So now you will have that object, right? So what if you flip your palm upside down? So now your palm is facing the ground. What happened? That object drops to the floor, right? So he, he is, he, what you did is binomial. So binomial is either one side or the other, right? So your palm is either facing up or facing down. Again, your palm is either facing up or facing down, or your hand is either facing up or facing down. So binomial, is the by, the prefix by in English means two, the bi, by means two. That means when you run a binomial experiment, you get two results, either a success or a failure. So the x is the result of an, an experiment. So x is the result of an experiment. And x is the result is either a success or a failure. In binomial distribution, the probability success, we use the letter P to stand for success, and then the failure is either success or failure, right? So they add up to 100%, and the failure, we call it a Q, which is one minus the probability of success, all right? So let's say you are trying to do something tomorrow, and the probability of success is 70%, that means the probability of failure is 30%, and they must add up to 100%. So that's how the success and failure works. So every time you take an action, right? You take an action. The probability is either a success or failure. You start your car right now. The result is either the car is on or off. It's either working or not working. You turn on your engine. It's either working or not working. So let me give you a few examples. So number one is you take a class. What do you get at the end of the semester? You either pass or you fail. So that is binomial. Number two, you flip a coin. What result do you expect to see? You either see a head or you see a tail, right? Number three, you flip a light switch. You try to turn on the light of your home or of your bedroom. What do you expect to see? The light is either on or is off, right? If the light fails, then it's off, right? And then uh, you shoot a basketball. What's the result going to be? It's either a hit or a miss, right? Or you start your computer. The computer is either working or not working. Or you test a product. You are a quality inspector. You are testing a product. The product is either pass or fail. Or the product is either defective or not defective, all right? Uh, so how about a non-binomial? So these are all binomial. This side, they are all binomial. The result is either a success or a failure. What about non-binomial? So what about not binomial? So not binomial, I have one example for you. So let's say you have a big box. Inside that big box, you have many, many marbles. You want to select a marble. So there, there are many colors, uh, let's say yellow, red, green. So the result is either a yellow marble, a red marble, or a green marble. Is this a binomial? The answer is no, because there are more than two results. So binomial allows two results. The by by means two, two results only, either a success or failure. So if you phrase the problem in another way, either the marble is yellow or non-yellow, then that will be a binomial. All right, it's either yellow or non-yellow. So that will be a bi binomial. So let's say you have a big closet. You randomly select a cloth. The cloth is either a red color or non-red. It's either red or not red. That would be a binomial. But if the result can be many, many colors, then that is not a binomial. And then uh, I have one more for you. So let's say a letter gray. Is this a binomial? No, the answer is not because you can get an A, B, C, D or F, so that would be, not be a binomial. But 
we can phrase the problem in another way. The result is either A or non-A, or the result is either B or not B. The result is either a C or not C. So if you phrase like that, then that would be a binomial. So let's say the probability that you will get an A in a stats class is 10%. So the probability that you will not get an A in a stats class would be a 90%. So this is the P and then this is a Q and they add up to 100%. So if you phrase like that, then that would be a binomial. So since I wrote not binomial, then this one is an, a big exception. So this one is binomial, but the A, B, C, D, F, that one is not. All right. So now you have a basic concept of what binomial is. Again, success or failure, two results, no, no more than two, strict success or failure. Success is P, failure is Q. These two uh, probabilities, they add up to 100%. So let's take a look at the feature of binomial experiment. So I type everything up for you. A binomial experiment has the following characteristics. So number one, there are N trials and N is fixed. So what is N trial? Trial means you try an experiment N times. So let's say you flip a coin 10 times, then N is equals to two. If you flip a coin 10 times, you if you roll a die 10 times, the n is equals to 10. If you start your car uh, 50 times, then n is equals to 50. If you turn on your computer five times, then n is equals to five. So n means you repeat an action n times, all right? So the n trials are independent and repeated under identical condition. So the first, my first start, stop, stop my car. The first start and the second start, they are completely independent. First doesn't affect the second, the second doesn't affect the first. So they are all in, independent and repeated under identical condition. So let's say you flip the first coin, so you get a result, right? The second coin, I'm not trying to do anything tricky to manipulate the result. So they, you flip a coin, then you flip a coin. They must repeat it under identical condition. And then each trial, so every action has two outcomes, either a success or failure. Success is P, failure is Q, one minus success equals to failure, and success plus failure is equals to one. The random variable X represents the number of successes out of N trial, so X must be less than N. So let's say uh, you flip a coin 10 times. Can you get uh, 11 heads? No. Can you get uh, 12 heads? No. That is, that is not true, right? So let's say uh, you take uh, you try your, um, you shoot a basketball eight times. Can, can you get uh, tw 20 successes? No, you try something eight times, then you get eight results, right? Just like you take A classes, you get A grades. You take an action eight times, then each action gives you one result, then you get eight results, right? X, X can be zero. So if you shoot a basketball eight times, then you might have like C zero hit. So you miss all eight of them, then the success is zero, right? Okay, so that, uh, that is the features and then the probability distribution function. So this one you do have to write it down and then let me tell you everything type in this box is for binomial distribution only. Again, everything you see in this box is for binomial only. So n is the number of independent trials. So how many times you take that action? X is the number of successes. P is the probability of success. Q is one minus P, probability of failure. This is not hard to interpret. And then for binomial notation, they use that one, one once a while. Like they use that in some of the books. So they have the random variable X. So this little curve means follow binomial distribution, which is B with N independent trials and the P is probability of success, all right? And then what does that mean? So that means the random variable X follows, the little curve means follow. Oh, I, I type normal distribution, oh, what? Binomial, binomial distribution, oh, by, by the way, normal distribution, we will discuss that next. Uh, binomial distribution with n trials and the probability of success p. So with the formula is n choose x. So you try something n times, you receive x successes. Again, you take an action n times and you have x successes. 
and then the probability of success raised to the x power and then the probability of failure i hate writing q i will just write one minus p raised to n minus x power and then the formula i know you hate doing such complicated computation i will show you how to do this using a calculator so the uh combination we talk about that in in the previous uh lessons the combination is n factorial divided by x factorial times n minus x factorial and then we have three more uh, formulas the expected value variance and standard deviation I, I know in the uh in a general random discrete random variable we have a different formula to find expected value but this set of formula once again is for binomial distribution only so everything you see this in, in this box is for binomial only so for binomial distribution they have a specific set of formulas to take care of the business all right so some textbook for the n choose x the, the x some textbook use r some textbook use k but uh in, in in my video i will just use x to represent the number of success so when you read some other books so don't be scared that why they use r or k because depending on the preference of the author all right so that is the binomial and then the next thing that we would like to discuss people love that a lot i will talk about how to do binomial on tr84 graphing calculator so first you have to go to second take out your calculator press the second and then press the vast key where is the vast key the vast key is right next to clear or right below the down arrow second vars so do, do you see that there is a D-I-S-T-R distribution right above the VARS, right? So second VARS, and then you hit the down arrow to find binomial PDF. We will discuss most of the distribution in, in an in a elementary stats class. But the first one that we would like to discuss is binomial PDF. What is PDF? PDF is probability density density function yes you can call that probability density function but in i would i prefer to call that probability distribution function probability is p d means distribution f means function so what does that mean that means you plug in a n you plug in the a success rate and then you plug in the number of success you want you get a probability so when you do binomial pdf that means you plug in a numbers to this formula and then you ask the calculator to give you a result so you don't need to do this by hand okay the calculator will do the whole thing for you so that is what binomial pdf is and and then what about the cdf the cdf i don't recommend you to use cdf because to understand the problem better i prefer to ask everybody to use pdf uh, cdf is uh, the c stands for cumulative all right Cumulative in statistics means adding up multiple probability. So you have five probability. Cumulative means you want the calculator to add them up for you. I don't recommend that. So if you are very familiar with binomial PDF, sure, you can use uh, CDF for, for adding probabilities. But I don't recommend that because using PDF makes the whole thing way more clear. And then I have an example right there. So if you select that binomial PDF, you will see a menu. They ask you for the trials, the P and the X. The trial is how many times you take that action. So let's say trial is 10. I try something 10 times. My success rate is 70%. X is I am looking for three successes. And then, so what that does is, so the calculator will do this, 10 choose three, and then a 70% raised to the third power, 1 minus 70 percent raised to 10 minus 3 power don't write 7 i prefer to write 10 minus 3 it's a way to show your work all right if i put 7 you might ask me hey where is the 7 come from if i take 10 minus 3 you know what happens in there right so that's why i write 10 minus 3 i don't write 7 you can write 7 if you want to but i prefer to show the whole thing so binomial pdf you see that you get that result so that is equals to 0 0.0090 i prefer to use four decimal places i already get used to it so now you don't need to worry about the, the combination okay so that is for a newer calculator if you are using an older calculator like a tr83 or older tr84 plus you might be wondering how come i don't see that little manual the binomial pdf so if you're using an older calculator this is the screenshot for you so you still go to second bars and then you find binomial pdf but once you do binomial pdf they will return to the home manual so they expect you to input a 
few numbers. So they want an N and they want a P, they want an X. So for the older calculator, you have to memorize the calculator command. They don't want you to do this. So that's why if you want to make a good investment, buy a new one. Uh, when I was learning that, I used the old one. I memorized all the calculator commands of so binomial PDF and PX, and you have to type the comma to separate them. Where is the comma? The comma is right above the seven. So do you see there is a comma right next on the left hand side of the open parenthesis and then right above seven. Do you see that? And then once you finish, so you type a 10, 0 0.70 and then three, you have to close the parenthesis. All right, so that would be all in this lesson. If you find my instruction to be very helpful, tell me in the comment section below. Please like, subscribe, share. Thank you really much. I see you all in the next part. Signing out.